And welcome to another Fold It Lab report. My name is BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design with my colleague Ian H. If this is your first time discovering these lab reports, we produce videos like these on the first of every month to tell you more about the science that's happening with Fold It. It's been a big month for Fold It. At the beginning of September, we announced a big update to the Fold It website. Basically, we've rebuilt the website from the ground up using a more modern framework that should be easier to maintain as Foldit continues to grow. The new forums have better support for images and file attachments and notifications. And we've added a 3D molecular viewer so that you can more easily share your solutions on the Foldit website. The new recipes page includes a code editor so you can write new recipes in your browser and manage your cookbook on the recipes webpage. And now the Foldit game itself has gotten two big new features as well. The first is a neural net mutate tool, which uses a breakthrough AI algorithm to redesign a protein. This neural net algorithm was developed right here at the University of Washington Institute for Protein Design, and it's changing the way that researchers design proteins. We won't get into all of the details here, but in a paper just published in the journal Science, the researchers showed that the new algorithm can redesign proteins with dramatically increased alpha fold confidence. When researchers test the new designs in the lab, they find that the proteins are more likely to fold up than proteins designed with classic methods. We expect the same to hold true for Foldit. Be sure to try it out in the game and you'll see that it's way faster than the classic mutate tool. We think Foldit players could use the new algorithm in combination with traditional Foldit tools to, for example, make new binder designs that have both high alpha fold confidence and great binder metrics. This could mean better solutions for every Foldit design puzzle. The other big change is for small molecule design in Foldit. We've made a brand new tool for accessing state-of-the-art chemical libraries in Foldit. One of the main challenges with small molecule design is synthesizability. It doesn't matter how good your compound looks on a computer if we can't synthesize it to test it in the lab. We don't have this problem when you design new proteins because all proteins are made from the same amino acids and those can be easily encoded in DNA. But there are many more possibilities with small molecules. We can incorporate different atoms like fluorine or phosphorus, or we can modify single, double, or triple bonds or create ring structures. The space of possible compounds is endless, but that doesn't mean that all compounds are feasible to make as a drug. It's important that a drug compound can be made easily and if it's cheap to make, that's even better. To this end, chemists have created chemical libraries, which are just lists of the millions and millions of molecules that we know we can make pretty easily. When searching for a new drug to treat a disease, like lupus, for example, pharmaceutical companies will often start by looking through these chemical libraries to find therapeutic compounds. Or they might start by designing their dream compound and then searching the libraries for anything that looks similar. In previous small molecule design puzzles, we've seen that Foldit players can design some really impressive small molecules. They make excellent interactions with the protein target, and they have some great properties, but they can't be easily synthesized for testing. Foldit's new compound library panel gives you access to the same libraries that professionals use. After you've designed your dream molecule, you can upload it to search the library for similar molecules. In a minute or two, the search will return a list of the most similar compounds in the library. You can pick one of these and keep working, or you can go back and make some modifications and try search again. We're hoping that Foldit players can make use of this compound library tool to make drug molecules that can be easily tested in the lab. And that brings us to our puzzle updates. You might have noticed we've been making a lot of upgrades to make Foldit better for small molecule design. We think the game is now at a point where it can compete with other professional drug design tools. And we've entered Foldit into an international drug design challenge called CASH. CASH is an organized competition that allows researchers to compare different methods for creating drug molecules to see if we can create small molecules that both bind to the target and also have great drug properties. These compounds would be starting points for new drugs. The way the competition works is the different research groups will all try to design compounds against the same protein target. The organizers will then test all of the submitted compounds in the lab, so the researchers get a head-to-head -head comparison of how good all the different methods are. The current cash target is a helicase protein from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. That's the same virus that causes COVID-19. 
The helicase is essential for viral replication, so a drug that binds and inhibits the helicase could be a useful antiviral against COVID-19. Over the next couple of months, we'll post folded puzzles so that you can design molecules against this target. At the end of November, we'll pick our favorite 100 molecules to submit to cash. Foldit can only submit molecules that can actually be made in the lab, so it'll be important to use the compound library tool when designing your molecules. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month we have a binder design from puzzle 2201 by DCR Wheeler. Um, this is a monkeypox H3 binder design puzzle from the series that we just announced. And if you remember, this uses a predicted structure for the monkeypox H3 target protein because we don't actually have a crystal structure of this target. And if we look at this design against our monkeypox predicted target, we see a nice three helix bundle from DCR Wheeler with a strong hydrophobic core and lots of blue residues on the outside. This is nice, should be a soluble protein. There is a lot of orange hydrophobic contacts where we bind the target. This is good. This should make for sticky binding. And we do see some hydrogen bonds. I like this aspartate here makes some hydrogen bonds with, it looks like backbone atoms that might be buried upon binding. Um, one thing that does give me a little cause for concern is this helix that makes both of the binding interactions is almost entirely hydrophobic. Um, this lysine will help there, and this aspartate will also help here, but if we have a helix that is too hydrophobic, that has um, almost completely hydrophobic um, amino acids, this helix might not fold up correctly, and it could cause some misfolding for the entire protein. I don't know if that would actually be a problem here. Um, it does look like it makes really good contacts with the target. So if it does fold up, I think there's a good chance it would bind. Um, if we see the objectives, um, this design has a really strong DDG, negative 42 kcals per mole, uh, an extremely high contact surface area of 432. I think we have zero buried unsats, which is always great. Remember that we cannot um, allow for any buried polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. Um, if we bury polar atoms that cannot make hydrogen bonds, either at the interface or in our protein core, uh, that could prevent binding, and that would be uh, that would not be good. Um, so all in all, this looks like an excellent binder design from DCR Wheeler. A reminder to please share your favorite designs with scientists. We love to see which designs you are most excited about, regardless of how they rank on the puzzle leaderboards. That's it for this month. If you want to see what it looks like when we test proteins in the lab, check out this series of videos that we've just put out. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time.